This sound file contains the spoken word version of a Wikipedia article on the grandfather paradox. It is recorded by user S. Whistler, and the material was recorded on the 29th of April, 2012. The grandfather paradox, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox is a proposed paradox of time travel, first described, in this exact form, by the science fiction writer René Bargevel in his 1943 book Le Voyageur Imprudent, Future Times 3. The paradox is this. Suppose a man travelled back in time and killed his biological grandfather before the latter met the traveller's grandmother. As a result, one of the traveller's parents, and by extension the traveller himself, would never have been conceived. This would imply that he could not have travelled back in time after all, which means the grandfather would still be alive, and the traveller would have been conceived, allowing him to travel back in time and kill his grandfather. Thus, each possibility seems to imply its own negation, a type of logical paradox. Another alternative is just the fact that the time traveller is alive in the present means that he failed in his endeavour to kill the grandparent. This would mean that you could act with complete freedom, as whatever you did in the past cannot change the present because its implications have already been felt. Despite the name, the grandfather paradox does not exclusively regard the impossibility of one's own birth. Rather, it regards any action that makes impossible the ability to travel back in time in the first place. The paradox's namesake example is merely the most commonly thought of when one considers the whole range of possible actions. Another example would be using scientific knowledge to invent a time machine, then going back in time, and, whether through murder or otherwise, impeding a scientist's work that would eventually lead to the very information that you used to invent the time machine. An equivalent paradox is known in philosophy as auto-infanticide going back in time and killing oneself as a baby. The grandfather paradox has been used to argue that backwards time travel must be impossible. However, a number of hypotheses have been postulated to avoid the paradox, such as the idea that the past is unchangeable, so the grandfather must have already survived the attempted killing, as stated earlier, or the time traveller creates an alternate timeline in which the traveller was never born. Contents 1. Scientific Theories 2. Theories in Science Fiction 3. Other Considerations Scientific Theories Novikov Self-Consistency Principle The Novikov Self-Consistency Principle and Kip S. Thorne expresses one view on how backwards time travel could be possible without a danger of paradoxes. According to this hypothesis, the only possible timelines are those entirely self-consistent, so anything a time traveller does in the past must have been part of history all along, and the time traveller can never do anything to prevent the trip back in time from happening, since this would represent an inconsistency. In layman's terms, this is often called determinism. It conflicts with the notion of free will. Succinctly, this explanation states that if time travel is possible, then actions are determined by history. Parallel Universes There could be an ensemble of parallel universes, such that when the traveller kills the grandfather, the act took place in, or resulted in the creation of, a parallel universe, where the traveller's counterpart never existed as a result. However, his prior existence in the original universe is unaltered. Succinctly, this explanation states that, if time travel is possible, then multiple versions of the future exist in parallel universes. This theory would also apply if a person went back in time to shoot himself, because in the past he would be dead, as in the future he would be alive and well. Examples of parallel universes postulated in physics are in quantum mechanics, the many worlds interpretation suggests that every seemingly random quantum event with a non-zero probability actually occurs in all possible ways in different worlds, so that history is constantly branching into different alternatives. The physicist David Deutsch has argued that if backwards time travel is possible, it should result in the traveller ending up in a different branch of history than the one he departed from. See also Quantum Suicide and Immortality. 
M-theory is put forward as a hypothetical master theory that unifies the six superstring theories, although at present it is largely incomplete. One possible consequence of ideas drawn from M-theory is that multiple universes in the form of three-dimensional membranes, known as brains, could exist side by side in a fourth large spatial dimension, which is distinct from the concept of time as a fourth dimension. See brain cosmology. However, there is currently no argument from physics that there would be one brain for each physically possible version of history, as in the many worlds interpretation, nor is there any argument that time travel would take one to a different brain. Non-existence theory. According to this theory, if one were to do something in the past that would cause their non-existence, upon returning to the future, they would find themselves in a world where the effects, and chain reactions thereof, their actions are not present, as the person never existed. Through this theory, they would still exist, though. A famous example of this theory is, it's a wonderful life. Theories in Science Fiction Parallel Universes Resolution the idea of preventing paradoxes by supposing that the time traveller is taken to a parallel universe while his original history remains intact, which is discussed above in the context of science, is also common in science fiction. See time travel as a means of creating historical divergences. Restricted Action Resolution Another resolution, of which the Novikov self-consistency principle can be taken as an example, holds that if one were to travel back in time, the laws of nature, or other intervening cause, would simply forbid the traveller from doing anything that could later result in their time travel not occurring. For example, a shot fired at the traveller's grandfather misses, or the gun jams, or misfires, or the grandfather is injured, but not killed, or the person killed turns out to not be the real grandfather, or some other event prevents the attempt from succeeding. No action the traveller takes to affect or change history can ever succeed, as some form of bad luck or coincidence always prevents the outcome. In effect, the traveller cannot change history. Often in fiction, the time traveller does not merely fail to prevent the actions, but in fact precipitates them usually by accident. This theory might lead to concerns about the existence of free will. In this model, free will is an illusion, or at least not unlimited. This theory also assumes that causality must be constant, i.e. that nothing can occur in the absence of cause, whereas some theories hold that an event may remain constant even if its initial cause was subsequently eliminated. Closely related, but distinct, is the notion of the timeline as self-healing. The time traveller's actions are like throwing a stone in a large lake. The ripples spread, but are soon swamped by the effect of existing waves. For instance, if a time traveller could assassinate a politician who led his country into a disastrous war, but the politician's followers would then use his murder as a pretext for the war, and the emotional effect of that would cancel out the loss of the politician's charisma, or the traveller could prevent a car crash from killing a loved one, only to have the loved one killed by a mugger, or fall down the stairs, choke on a meal, killed by a stray bullet, etc., in the 2002 film, The Time Machine, this scenario is shown where the main character builds a time machine to save his fiancée from being killed by a mugger, only for her to die in a car crash instead. As he learns from a trip to the future, he cannot save her with the machine, or he would never have been inspired to build the machine, so that he could go back and save her in the first place. In some stories, it is only the event that precipitated the time traveller's decision to travel back in time that cannot be substantially changed. In others, all attempted changes heal in this way. And in still others, the universe can heal most changes, but not sufficiently drastic ones. This is also an explanation advanced by the Doctor Who role-playing game, which supposes that time is like a stream. You can damn it, divert it, or block it, but overall the direction resumes after a period of conflict. 
It also may not be clear whether the time traveller altered the past or precipitated the future he remembers, such as a time traveller who goes back in time to persuade an artist, whose single surviving work is famous, to hide the rest of the works to protect them. If, on returning to his time, he finds that these works are now well known, he knows he has changed the past. On the other hand, he may return to a future exactly as he remembers, except that a week after his return the works are found. Were they actually destroyed, as he believed, when he travelled back in time, and has he preserved them? Or was it the disappearance occasioned by the artists hiding them at his urging, and the skill with which they were hidden, and so the long time to find them stemmed from his urgency? Destruction Resolution Some science fiction stories suggest that any paradox would destroy the universe, or at least parts of space and time affected by the paradox. The plots of such stories tend to revolve around other preventing paradoxes, such as the final episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. A less destructive alternative of this theory suggests the death of the time traveller, whether the history is altered or not. An example would be in the first part of the Back to the Future trilogy, where the lead character's alteration of history results in a risk of his own disappearance, and he has to fix the alteration to preserve his own existence. In this theory, killing one's grandfather would result in the disappearance of one's self. History would erase all traces of the person's existence, and the death of the grandfather would be caused by another means, say, another existing person firing the gun. Thus, the paradox would never occur from a historical viewpoint. Temporal Modification Negation Theory while stating that if time travel is possible, it would be impossible to violate the grandfather paradox, it goes further to state that any action taken that itself negates the time travel event cannot occur. The consequences of such an event would in some way negate that event, be it by either voiding the memory of what one was doing before doing it, by preventing the action in some way, or even by destroying the universe among all possible consequences. It states, therefore, that to successfully change the past, one must do so incidentally. For example, if one tried to stop the murder of one's parents, he would fail. On the other hand, if one travelled back in time and did something else that, as a result, prevented the death of someone else's parents, then such an event would be successful, because the reason for the journey, and therefore the journey itself, remains unchanged, preventing a paradox. In addition, if this event had some colossal change in the history of mankind, and such an event would not void the ability or purpose of the journey back, it would occur, and would hold. In such a case, the memory of the event would immediately be modified in the mind of the time traveller. An example of this would be someone to travel back to observe life in Austria in 1887, and while there shoot five people, one of which was Hitler's parents. Hitler would therefore never have existed, but since this would not prevent the invention of the means for time travel or the purpose of the trip, then such a change would hold. But for it to hold, every element that influenced the trip must remain unchanged. The Third Reich would not exist, and the world we know today would be completely different. This would void someone convincing another party to travel back in time to kill the people without knowing who they are and making the timeline stick, because by being successful they would void the first party's influence and therefore the second party's actions. These issues are treated humorously in an episode of Futurama in which Fry travels back in time and inadvertently causes his grandfather's death before he marries his grandmother. His distraught grandmother then seduces him, and, on returning to his own time, Fry learns that he is his own grandfather. Other Considerations Consideration of the grandfather paradox has led some to the idea that time travel is, by its very nature, paradoxical, and therefore logically impossible, on the same order as round squares. For example, the philosopher Bradley Dowden made this sort of argument in the textbook Logical Reasoning, where he wrote, Nobody has ever built a time machine that could take a person back to an earlier time. Nobody should be seriously trying to build one, either, because a good argument exists for why the machine can never be built. 
The argument goes like this. Suppose you did have a time machine right now, and you could step into it and travel back to some earlier time. Your actions in that time might then prevent your grandparents from ever having met one another. This would make you not born, and thus not step into the time machine. So the claim that there could be a time machine is self-contradictory. However, some philosophers and scientists believe that time travel into the past need not be logically impossible, provided that there is no possibility of changing the past, as suggested, for example, by the Novikov self-consistency principle. Bradley Dowden himself revised the above view after being convinced of this in an exchange with the philosopher Norman Schwartz. Consideration of the possibility of backwards time travel in a hypothetical universe described by a Godel metric led famed logician Kirk Godel to assert that time travel must itself be a sort of illusion. He seems to have been suggesting something along the lines of the block time view, which does not really flow, but is just another dimension, like space, with all events, at all times, being fixed within this four-dimensional block.